Day few was all found this on the side of O today, sitting under a tree for a couple of weeks. TAC SPC flat screen CRT. I suppose it's be good to keep just for the um to see how this technology evolved. This is the last of the last of the last before flat panels. The flat screen CRTs are quite interesting in how thickly they're built. This is a Panasonic Beijing Matsushita picture tube. This brand's not very good, but it's got DVD input at least, so it'll have half half good picture too. It's sort of half worth, keep, half worth keeping, even though it's an SPC TV. Let's see what sort of goodies are in this thing. How good the flyback and everything is in it. 2005 this thing dates back to. This is the last of the uh, the very last of the um, CRT technology before I stopped or uh, discontinued them off the market. So it's got a CQC branded flyback. It's like a Yingfa. Got a nice gap between the ferrite core and the body of the transformer. I often want a nice primary on that. Here's the same chassis as the uh, Celestial Chang Hong TVs. Just different firmware, the suit TIAC, but uh, Orion brand and TIAC are pretty much the same. The remotes both work the same, same coding, all barcodes and everything. Yeah, lead all, same brand transformers and everything as the uh, cheap Celestial TVs used. Cheap speakers, 10 watts, 8 ohms. There's the audio amp in there, can't read it from here though. Looks like a Philips TDA, I think. Although it might be a um, lower powered device. It might be at least 6 watt or 5 watt audio uh, amplifier there. Looks like the one that was in that Orion TV. You can see it's all snap board construction. This originally attached to here. The stuck through the machine is one piece. And the flow machine, the reflow, uh, the, the soldering machine. And the final assembly, they just snap it off and then put it on the neck. So cheap. There's the brains of the TV, or the firmware's on there. The OSD, it's a... It's actually, I think it's a... Is it a Philips? No, don't know what, what it is, but... It's something generic. This thing even has a calendar on it. I just gave it a quick power up, and it's got a calendar on it. Chang Zhao. Chang Zhao, China. 5th, September 2005. Yeah, here's the last of them. The last of the uh, CRTs, then they discontinued them and started selling on the flat panels. Lead free, obviously an inline, inline gun. <laughs> Delta guns are pretty rare, you don't see them anymore. They were very rare here, Delta guns, even back in the day. Uh, let's see, we've got pretty basic uh, laying on the circuit board. It's got a um, uh, composite uh, inputs at least, which is actually quite good. You'd actually get quite good picture on this. The rest of the rental of friends here, so now I'm playing a Wii on a 70 inch LED LCD. And the, uh, the Super Mario game they were playing on the Wii looked like absolute shit on a 70 inch L uh, LCD. Everything was just all um, jagged and pixelated. So I think good old CRTs are good for that. For gaming, console gaming. Especially with um, games like that, I see how the best because just the picture just looks so much better and the detail is so much better. So I might be uh, try and clean this up and keep it if I can. I've got to make some space and face something else out to uh, make up for the room, but we'll see what happens. I'll try and keep at least the. I've got the big celestial, and I'd like to keep one smaller version that has the uh, composite, one of each. Especially a flat LCD or a flat um a flat screen um CRT, at least have at least one of an example of what these are like. Even if they're gonna sit in the container off site for so many years, at least they're uh, worthwhile just, just for the um just, just as a remembrance thing before they become forgotten, because another ten years time you're not gonna get passive components like this anymore. Repairing electronics is a dying art, especially a radio shack in America shutting down. They're to crap anyway, but it's good to keep the parts in at least. 
all right, I'll start cleaning this up and put it back together, give it a test on camera, and have a look what the uh, OSD and the calendar's like. Although I did test the calendar, it seems to be stuck on 1900. Bit out of date, but I haven't figured out how to change the year yet. All right, just blew it out. I think it's already powered up. There we go. Got a nice OSD in it. Our buttons are on the side in this one. Ugh, very bloody front heavy. No modulator that can plug into it. Menu. <laughs> nice OSD. White tone sharpness. What else have we got in the menu? Sound, presets, calendar. And yeah, that's better. How about the calendar here? Calendar. Volume into the calendar. I can't change the year. No. There we go. 2100 to 1900. So it's got a 200 year life cycle this TV. Man, that's pretty good for something made in China. Let's see, like 2014 here. Let's go back in time. 2015, idiot. Man, I feel like 2014, I can't just come and get how quickly time's gone by. I'm gonna get back in time more. Back down the month. It's March. There's a Today's Thursday the 5th, that's today's date there. There we are, at least I've got something useful out of this TV, isn't it? I don't have any signal, I'll put, I'll put all my signal sources away. Yeah, it's got the circuitry that doesn't put the picture on the screen unless everything's warmed up. And shuts the picture off when it shuts down, so I can't get no fancy shrinking on the picture when it turns off. So that's boring, I can't throw a slow-mo CRT shut down on this thing. Filaments are in there, look at them glow. I miss seeing it in TVs. I used to love looking at this on TVs, even though there's x-rays coming out, but I just love that. Better on the vintage one, of course. Anyway, this thing's fine. Works all right, cleaned up good. Anyway, that'd be enough for now. Thanks for watching.